Cool. That's Brian Johnson, a tech billionaire spending millions on trying to live forever with one very simple mission. Don't die. And he recently made headlines in India for walking out of a podcast early, not because of a bad question or an argument, but because he couldn't handle the air quality. The reason why I left is the air quality is so bad, it's like smoking three to four cigarettes in a 24 hour period. And when you're trying to not die, that is not something you want to do. But this isn't anything new. Air pollution has been killing Indian people for decades. And it's not just India. A recent WHO report highlighted that 99% of the world breathe unhealthy air. So I want to understand how big a problem is air pollution really? And what effect is it having on people's health? So I just found out that 6.7 million people die early every year because of poor air quality. That's more than the population of Denmark here, all dying early because of poor air, like the air we breathe. And the WHO puts it down to five key air pollutants that are the biggest threat to public health safety. So that's sulfur dioxide, ozone, nitrogen dioxide, PM10 and PM2.5. Air quality is measured using an air quality index or AQI, and it takes all of these pollutants and converts them into a single number from good to extremely poor. And for each key pollutant, the WHO has set specific thresholds for what is considered safe. But what's considered safe actually varies significantly depending on where you live. This means that because of economic constraints and feasibility, places like India, just here, allow far more pollution before it's even considered dangerous. Of all of these pollutants, PM2.5 is the biggest concern. PM 2.5. PM 2.5. PM 2.5. It stands for particulate matter, specifically 2.5 microns or less in size. So tiny particles that we can't see, but are all around us in the air we breathe. For reference, this is the size of a human hair. And the particles of concern include PM10, meaning 10 microns in diameter, and PM2.5, which are even smaller and more dangerous, as unlike PM10 particles, which get trapped in the nose and throat, causing minor irritation, PM2.5 can enter deeper into the lungs, severely affecting our breathing. And some particles are even so small that they can enter the bloodstream and cause damage to other organs. In India, the safe limit for these pollutants is actually six times higher than the WHO standard. So a good day according to India's Central Pollution Board Control would be actually an unhealthy day in the EU and a very unhealthy day according to the WHO. People usually go out for morning walks a lot, but on the news channels it has been told that please do not go out and exercise in that, those conditions. You'll be out of breath. Your eyes will be irritating. You might get some kind of skin irritations and some kind of skin issues. This is what is being told to people that if you stay at home and do not exercise out there, it'll be better for you. And that's just daily life, but India's air quality gets even worse during winter. And nowhere is that more apparent than the capital, New Delhi. Air pollution has shot up to its worst level this season in New Delhi. Delhi has become toxic. Some areas have pollution levels 50 times higher than the World Health Organization's recommended safe limit. The air gets so polluted that you can barely see past a few meters in front of you. This is the same street before and after air pollution levels spike in Delhi. I think two or three years back, we saw some accidents happening near Delhi and uh, Agra Highway where around 10 vehicles just collided into each other just because people could not see beyond a certain limit. So as the cold winter air travels down towards Delhi, the less denser cold air traps pollutants near the ground, whilst the warmer air sits on top, acting like a lid, sealing in all that poison. And during this time, PM 2.5 levels exceed 250, which is 50 times the WHO safe limit. To put that all into perspective, spending one day breathing this air is like smoking 50 cigarettes. But beyond the immediate breathing difficulties, long-term exposure to PM2.5 levels is now the greatest risk to life expectancy in India. It's worse than cardiovascular disease, worse than smoking. On average, PM2.5 pollution shortens life expectancy by 5.3 years. One major analysis reviewed over 100 studies to quantify the impact of long-term PM exposure, and the results were shocking. The average yearly PM10 levels in Delhi is around 250. And the study found that at that level, your risk of death is nearly three times higher. And to put this all into perspective, yearly exposure to PM2.5 levels at that level would increase your risk of death by seven times. And that's just death from any disease. The risk of specific diseases like lung cancer, COPD and heart disease are even worse. People uh, do not really re realize how bad it is because it does not have an immediate impact on you, right? And that's the problem. Air pollution is a silent killer. You don't feel it in the way you would a heart attack and you don't see it like you would a cigarette in your hand, but it's still taking years off of your life. So how did India's air get this deadly? 
Well, pollution this extreme doesn't just come from one single source. There are several major contributors. As the populations of cities in India like Delhi grow, this means more people, and more people means more cars. And one major contributor is vehicle emissions. Over 14 million cars are registered in Delhi alone, and traffic congestion alongside diesel reliance from outdated vehicles floods toxins into the atmosphere. And as cities like Delhi rapidly expand, construction projects kick up huge amounts of dust into the atmosphere. This is the second major contributor. Unregulated constructions means thick fumes of particulate matter enter the air. And more people means more energy. But coal powers 70% of India's electricity. India cannot live without coal. This is the third major contributor. India's reliance on coal comes at a cost, and that's millions of tons of carbon emissions entering the atmosphere. There are also several other major contributors too. Across India, burning garbage is common, and Delhi is home to three massive landfills, mountains of waste that release toxic chemicals into the atmosphere. As well as every year, farmers in Punjab and Haryana burn over 500 million tons of crop stubble because it is the cheapest and fastest way to clear their fields for the next crop. Air pollution this bad doesn't just come from one single source, which means to fix it requires many solutions. But many say it's too late and that India's air can't be cleaned. But not too long ago, people said the same thing about China. Beijing was regarded the smog capital of the world. But still, there is no end in sight to combating the smog cloud. China faced many of the same problems, an over-reliance on coal, traffic pollution from outdated engines, and pollution from construction and industries. But in 2015, China declared war on pollution. They banned coal in major cities and shifted to cleaner energy. Industries faced heavy penalties for violating air quality standards, and China became the world's largest electric vehicle market. The result was in under 10 years, China's PM 2.5 levels dropped by nearly 40%. It is possible, but the question is, can India's government do the same? There's only a little that people can do, right? I mean, there's very little that public, general public can do. Whatever changes need to be brought, that definitely has to come top down. But you can still take measures to protect yourself. Firstly, check the AQI daily. If you wouldn't go outside during a hurricane, then why would you step outside when the air is toxic? You can use freely available tools to measure the air quality near you and plan your day accordingly. Secondly, in places like Delhi, wearing a mask isn't optional. It's a necessity. But not all masks protect you the same. For air pollution, cloth masks are basically useless. But also, so are these surgical ones. They don't block fine particulate matter, so they don't protect you against PM 2.5 and PM 10. Instead, you should either use an N95 or FFP3 mask. They have a tight seal, but also have electrostatically charged layers that trap fine particles like a magnet. Some online sellers claim that you can wash these masks, but that's a scam because washing destroys that electrostatic charge, making it useless. And thirdly, if you can afford it, investing in an air purifier with a HEPA filter can make a huge difference to your indoor air quality. But unfortunately for many in India, even the best advice, like wearing an N95 mask or staying indoors and buying an air purifier, isn't an option. The only way to truly fix this crisis is government action. And this isn't just happening in India, but countries all over the world. I watched these stories unfold from the UK, where stepping outside and taking a deep breath is effortless. I take it for granted, but in places like India, millions wake up every day to skies thick with poison, to air that scars their lungs, to a reality where breathing freely isn't a right, it's an early death sentence. Brian Johnson can just get up and leave when the air quality gets bad, but for 1.3 billion people in India, leaving isn't an option. The reason for this video is simple, to create as much awareness and noise as possible. Silence lets this crisis continue. We must push for solutions that don't just protect the privilege, but save the millions who have no way out. Clean air isn't a privilege. It's a basic human right, and I think it's time we start treating it that way. Hey guys, my name's Esh, a medical doctor working in London, and I create videos to help tackle health misinformation. The show Science Says delves into what the science really says about the health claims that dominate our online feeds. You can support me in the mission by firstly subscribing to the channel, but then secondly, if you can, joining the Patreon, where I add exclusive content there. I create all of these videos for free because I truly believe all educational content should be free and widely accessible to all. But if you can support, it would mean the world if you can join the Patreon. Until next time, and see you soon.